Hello, everybody. Welcome to a post-wrestling news update. I'm John Pollock, along with Wei Ting. It's Sunday afternoon, and we wanted to put something out there today because obviously we are still reacting to the the very uh, raw news that was the passing of John Huber, a.k.a. Brody Lee, formerly Luke Harper, who was announced passed away on Saturday at the very young age of 41 for many way, this just a gut punch to so many. Of course, we had been, you know, um, certainly it was very noticeable, his absence from television. But I don't think uh, outside of a small circle realized what what this what the situation was. And ultimately, just the absolute worst case scenario that was going on for this individual. Uh, it's just tragedy just uh, seems to not even properly encapsulate what this is it's just a really really sad story uh involving this man's death yeah yeah um again you know um i feel like as wrestling fans we we are somehow like i don't know like it's it's not the first time we've we've like dealt with tragedy really as a community but um I, There's a lot of it. It's it's a lot of it. Um, but it always not, hurts more when it's like somebody who's so young and someone we've just seen, you know, like in, I think you can argue in the prime of their career. Uh, certainly, maybe like, you know, in terms of, um, I don't know, success is part of a, a you know, a, a real significant part of a company. So the fact that nobody really knew the extent of like, you know, this, this, this illness that he was suffering from. And then just all of a sudden be kind of like, you know, told of this news. It's I've seen like an outpouring of grievance, you know, from the, from the community at a, at a scale that I haven't seen in a long time. Yeah. So the statement that came out from AEW was that the all elite wrestling family is heartbroken in an industry filled with good people. John Huber was exceptionally respected and beloved in every way, a fierce and captivating talent, a thoughtful mentor and simply a very kind soul that starkly contradicted his persona as Mr. Brody Lee. John's love for his wife Amanda and children Brody and Nolan was evident to all of us who were fortunate to spend time with him, and we send our love and support to his beautiful family today and always. John's popularity among his peers and influence on the wrestling world was worldwide and transcended AEW, so this loss will be felt by many for a long time. We were privileged at AEW to call John Huber a brother, a friend, and one of our own. Also on Saturday night, his wife, Amanda, did put out a statement. Um, the, the entire thing we do have the, the text of in the story we have up on the site. But from the first paragraph, she noted that her heart's broken and stated he passed surrounded by loved ones after a hard fought battle with a non COVID related lung issue and thanked the Mayo Clinic and their team of doctors and nurses who were attending to him uh, during the during this whole thing. So that is, that's what we are aware of now. I, on Saturday night, I had gotten a message from a friend of mine who I guess had heard, um, the story before it had gotten out and was trying to find out if it was true. And I mean, I was not aware of it and it was almost momentarily after that the statement came out from AEW. So this just kind of, nailed me um just seeing this because i mean yes he is he has been off television um when he you know they did the dog collar match with cody and like it made sense that after such a brutal match you sell the effects and then you go off television for a bit now this had been two months and certainly there were the questions like is everything okay and aew had been very quiet about it and even tony khan addressed it on one of the recent conference calls and was not going to divulge anything. So, I mean, there was the concern about like, what is going on with him? This being such an extreme um, situation that was actually going on. We also saw from the the spoilers that did come out from the last uh, dynamite, the one that aired this past Wednesday, that they did do a segment for the live crowd where Brody's son uh, pinned Kenny Omega. And I mean, you look back now at, you know, the significance of that. I mean, I read it differently at the time that, I mean, I just thought it meant, well, Brody was probably there then. So it's, you know, he's 
on his way back to television, I, and and then you look back at, you know, what this family is going through. It's, it's such a heartbreaking story. I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to be able to add anything more than so many others have already. It's just, as you mentioned, way, I think he was in the, the biggest run of his career. He, his, his introduction into AEW, I think it gave Dark Order its direction and then saw this group go from one that a year ago was just being panned left and right to one that broke through on being the elite that, I mean, for all intents and purposes, this show is now being the Dark Order and completely turned it around. And I think it was Brody Lee had a big part to do with that and and his role on that show as well and the chemistry with John Silver. Like, it just seemed that... This last year, he was, you know, went from a, a period in WWE where I think he was very frustrated into this environment that he got to kind of work his way through, had that, you know, that dominant win over Cody. And, you know, he was 41, he, you know, he was, you know, later on in his career, he had been a you know 17 year veteran at this point, but really felt like everything was starting to click for him uh, with the move to AEW. Mm hmm. Yeah. You know, just even before that, I mean, the whole thing with his contract status and the WWE and him making sort of a public play to try to get released at a time uh, for the better part, I would say of like the past, you know, year, maybe two years, it feels like we've at least, you know, uh, audiences have had glimpses of this guy wanting a whole lot more for his career than what he was able to achieve in the WWE. Certainly anytime he was given the ball. While in the WWE, I think you saw the guy perform to the absolute best of his ability. Whether, like, you know, you think back to, like, that, like, uh, at the beginning of that SmackDown split where he was given sort of, like, a prime, you know, at least, like, it felt like he was getting a singles push. And, you know, whether due to injury or whatever other reason, you know, things ultimately didn't really completely kind of like, you know, uh breakthrough for him. And so you saw the Bludgeon Brothers thing, and then that got cut short, uh, again, due to, you know, uh, things beyond the his The injury control. to Rowan, and then... Yeah. Yeah, his... it just seemed like whenever something got going, there would be, you know, some some roadblock, whether it was, you know, the breakup of the Wyatt family or, you know, an unfortunate injury at a time when they were really pushing the Bludgeon Brothers as that monster heel tag team. And then, you know, I don't think even people would remember like the brief return of Harper and Rowan right at the end where uh, mm -hmm. they got involved with uh, Daniel Bryan and uh, and then just finished it. Like his last appearance on TV would have been uh, October of last year, did a couple more live events and then received his release by the end of the year. Also, if you remember, like there was a time like, where, you know, one of towards his last kind of like few months with the WWE, he had like. He didn't have many appearances, but he he was scheduled to wrestle at that World Collide thing during WrestleMania weekend, and like he wrote this like really great post about how it's like that's his WrestleMania. Yeah, like he was treating that as as WrestleMania, and again, it's just like you know, like at least like if you've been paying attention to to his run towards that point, you knew this guy wanted so much more. And by the time he got to AEW, you could see the hunger in him, even especially at his age, you know, not knowing how much more kind of of these years he had left. So I felt like every time you saw him on TV, he he really at least like, you know, like the, the, his, his entire run. But especially while he was in AEW, you could see him put a hundred plus, however, whatever cliche you want to use, like uh, of his effort completely into every single match, every single in-ring segment that he had, every single BTE segment that he had. And they were a tremendously entertaining few months uh, and incredibly tragic that, I mean, incredibly tragic for many re reasons, but, you know, strictly from an in-ring performer standpoint, I mean, really just scratching the surface of, I think, what he was ultimately capable of uh, on TV. So, yeah, really sad. And if you remember the, the time frame, his debut on AEW was March 18th, seven days removed from everything shutting down. And that night he was supposed to debut in his hometown of Rochester. Yeah. So that would have been, you know, certainly like the ultimate debut uh, in Rochester for him. And that that was week one of the, you know, empty or limited capacity dailies place. I mean, that that first one, like there were there were no fans there. That was our first week of watching Dynamite without fans. 
That's right. Yeah. And really for throughout his entire run, yeah, not really having a full audience. So, uh, but I mean, in hindsight, you know, I'm, t- and I, I, yeah, at least he, he, he reached the stage to the point where like, look at the outpouring of support where everybody from both companies and the independents, really everybody who is sort of a, a significant name in wrestling right now had some sort of interaction throughout his career and has just so many great things to say about him. So yeah, uh, I, uh, clearly somebody who, you know, mattered and uh, touched a lot of people. So ingrained with this generation of performers, which I can say that, you know, going back to a generation ago, you know, in the late nineties and throughout the two thousands, it was happening. You know, there, there were a lot of, you know, uh, deaths at a young age and in this generation yes they they happen but it's it's certainly not at, at the level um of past generations so this is you know th- this is not a case of you know someone you know like a danny hodge for instance you know that made it to 88 or you know some recent ones like pat patterson or howard finkel like these are you know this was a guy that, that this current generation we're watching on tv seems like everyone has a story of this guy and so many positive stories and sharing locker rooms with this guy. Like I, I would, I would expect this will be a big focus of uh, multiple promotions on, on television this week of how, you know, of, of tributes that, that we'll see in WWE, in AEW, probably uh, like, I, I just think like it's going to be a big thing on, on both shows this week. These are all new shows coming up. Yeah, uh, we have a live raw on Monday, and Wednesday is a live dynamite. And I, I think that this is going to be, you know, th- th- this has to be one of the major things. Like this, there's going to be a big tribute for him on Wednesday. You would assume. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah, um, you know, one consistency throughout all of these tributes is just this man's just unbelievable love for his family. Like that is if one thing that. I would certainly recommend going watch watching, although it'd be a very hard watch. Now the WWE network did do uh, w- one of their specials on Luke Harper and just hearing this man talk about his children and wanting to be a great father. It's really heartbreaking, but I'm glad those things exist that his children will get to see at, at one point and just this, these tributes to see what his father meant, but it was, like his family meant so much to him. And that's um, a wonderful way to be remembered by so many. Mm -hmm. Completely. We also had the passing of uh, Danny Hodge that I just want to talk about uh, briefly. Someone that was a, just an enormous icon when it comes to amateur wrestling within the United States. Somebody that uh, a two-time Olympian, uh, went undefeated during his uh, time at the University of Oklahoma. He went 46-0 and in university, never taken off his feet. And, of course, he went to the 52 Olympics when he was uh, 20 years old uh, and did not medal. But then at the 56 Olympics in, in Melbourne, Australia, it was a very controversial final where he was wrestling a Bulgarian by the name of uh, Nikola Stanchev. And Hodge was well ahead. He was up either 8-1 or 8-2. He was well ahead on points, and he went for this role, and really, through through no offense of his opponent, his shoulder grazed the mat, and one of the judges ruled this a pin, and it was considered this ultra-egregious call, and it cost him the gold medal. So he left with a silver medal in the Olympics. So, I mean, it's one of those that, like, it just seems like it was a a greatly disputed call that this was ruled a pin, but nonetheless, he would, he would not come back and go for the, the, the next set of games instead turning his focus then to boxing in 1957, he would win a golden gloves tournament and then turn pro where he went uh, and had I believe his record was, was eight and two uh, in total before he walked away from boxing. But this was someone that, you know, we, we talked about not all that recently, I think on an ask away about, you know, older, older wrestlers or such, like who would fare really well in MMA. This was someone that was world-class wrestler and, you know, a very good boxing, you know, pedigree as well that he developed uh, later in his athletic career. Like this is someone, if MMA existed, this guy would have been an enormous problem way at uh, UFC, 
minus 200 in 1959. Minus 200, yes. Uh, <laughs> I'm certainly judging by those credentials. Yeah, it seemed like somebody who had a real passion for all forms of combat sport uh, and somebody who I, I would have to assume would have, you know, gravitated naturally towards uh, this combination of it all in MMA. Yeah, uh, that all predated the pro wrestling, which started in, in late 1959. He you know, became synonymous as the NWA junior heavyweight champion for, you know, his first reign lasted four years and would hold the title seven times through 1976. And then, you know, be, became a major star in professional wrestling, uh, specifically with the NWA junior heavyweight title. And then it was his last title win came in early March of 1976. And 13 days later was in this horrific car accident that, Ended up, he broke his neck and had to walk himself to safety, holding his neck in place like it's something just out of a movie. And amazingly, was able to walk again and lived. But this did end his wrestling career at, at that point. But I mean, to to survive that uh, was remarkable in and of itself. Not even of which he would live another forty four years a after that. Um, just a, a huge name in in the lore of the, the history of combat sports. Uh, the NCAA, they have the Dan Hodge Trophy that's awarded to the top collegiate wrestler each year. Just an icon in that part of the world, in, in that uh, part of uh, wrestling, but also, you know, a, a giant standout in the history of professional wrestling and in Oklahoma. So uh, we do have a story up on Danny Hodge, but that was... Uh, yeah, just uh, two big stories on on Saturday, both of them. And it, I was telling you, Way, that after I wrote the the Danny Hodge obit, I was looking at all the obits that I've written this year, and I haven't even written. I've actually put together a list of the people that have passed away this year, and it's it's just staggering the number. Like it's I, like I counted over forty people involved in the industry that passed away this year. Jeez, how many by chance do you remember from? Like last year, I'm just curious if it was, if it's any more than, I guess, typical. I, I'd have to look it up, but it's, I couldn't imagine it's close to this in just number. Um, because you had, you had several deaths in Mexico that were COVID related, but also mm -hmm. just in terms of huge names this year, like just a sample here uh, that passed away this year, Rocky Johnson, Howard Finkel, Hana Kimura, Chad Gaspard, Rollerball Rocco. Um, La Parca 2, Tracy Smothers, Bob Armstrong, and just recently Danny Hodge, uh, Danny Havoc this year, Road Warrior Animal, Tracy Smothers. Like this, this was just a daunting year when you're at the end of it and looking back at all the people that passed away. Um, yeah. So anyway, our condolences to, uh, all those, uh, affected by, you know, the passing of Danny Hodge, the passing of, uh, John Huber and, Anything else way you you want to share about um anything just uh maybe any of the the coverage you've seen of Brody Lee's passing some of the tributes that have stood out for you it just seems everyone has weighed in and had such a such a close relationship with him I would specifically point people to the uh Twitter account for Chris Harrington who you know, grew up with this guy and it's it's actually an amazing story that these two guys from you know, in, in upstate New York who came up as wrestling fans together and ended up working for the second biggest company in the U S together. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. My heart goes out to him. Uh, you know, as, as far as coverage goes, not really so much myself. I mean, you know, I, I, I think anytime something like this happens, it's always when people are ready, you know, a good time to, um, you know, think about your, your favorite wrestling moment involving the performer, uh, any of your the favorite matches or, or, you know, BTE segments that you might have with the guy, share them with the, the rest of the audience, you know, um, whether it be on Twitter or on forum or discord or, or whatever, it's a, uh, it's a time to, to celebrate, you know, the, the work that he's done. Yes. So Wayne and I are going to be back on Monday night following raw, uh, we'll be chatting about that show and going through uh, any other news items uh, that pop up over the next uh, 24 hours. And I'm sure we'll still be uh, discussing this story um, as well going into this week and um, the tributes that will continue to come out. So 
that is it for us. I uh, just wanted to do a quick news update here uh, discussing those two passings. Uh, we hope everyone is doing well, and we'll speak with you on Monday night.